ਸਤਿ ਸ਼੍ਰੀ ਅਕਾਲ ਸਾਰਿਆਂ ਦਾ ਇਨ ਫੋਕਸ ਦੀ ਅੱਜ ਦੀ ਇਸ ਖਾਸ ਪੇਸ਼ਕਸ਼ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਟੋਰਾਂਟੋ ਤੋਂ ਮੈਂ ਹਾਂ ਜਸਲੀਨ ਕੌਰ ਸਾਡੀ ਅੱਜ ਦੀ ਖਾਸ ਪੇਸ਼ਕਸ਼ ਆਧਾਰਿਤ ਰਹੇਗੀ ਐਲਬੋਟਾ ਦੇ ਹੈਲਥ ਕ੍ਰਾਈਸਿਸ ਸੰਬੰਧੀ ਸ਼ੁਰੂਆਤ ਕਰਦੇ ਹਾਂ ਅੱਜ ਦੇ ਐਪੀਸੋਡ ਦੀ ਕੋਵਿਡ-19 ਕ੍ਰਾਈਸਿਸ ਦੇ ਚਲਦੇ ਆ ਐਲਬੋਟਾ ਸਰਕਾਰ ਵੱਲੋਂ ਪਿਛਲੇ ਮਹੀਨੇ ਹੈਲਥ ਕੇਅਰ ਐਮਰਜੈਂਸੀ ਡਿਕਲੇਅਰ ਕੀਤੀ ਗਈ ਸੀ ਦੱਸ ਦਈਏ ਕਿ ਪੈਂਡੈਮਿਕ ਸ਼ੁਰੂ ਹੋਣ ਤੋਂ ਲੈ ਕੇ ਹੁਣ ਤੱਕ ਐਲਬੋਟਾ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ 3 ਲੱਖ 8000 ਤੋਂ ਉੱਪਰ ਕੋਵਿਡ ਕੇਸਿਸ ਦਰਜ ਕੀਤੇ ਜਾ ਚੁੱਕੇ ਨੇ ਅਤੇ 2824 ਤੋਂ ਉੱਪਰ ਡੈਥ ਰਿਪੋਰਟ ਹੋ ਚੁੱਕੀਆਂ ਹਨ ਐਲਬੋਟਾ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਬੀਤੇ ਕਈ ਦਿਨਾਂ ਤੋਂ ਰੋਜ਼ਾਨਾ ਕੋਵਿਡ-19 ਦੇ ਹਜ਼ਾਰਾਂ ਦੀ ਗਿਣਤੀ ਵਿੱਚ ਕੇਸਿਸ ਦਰਜ ਕੀਤੇ ਜਾ ਰਹੇ ਹਨ ਜਿਸ ਕਰਕੇ ਸੂਬੇ ਦਾ ਹੈਲਥ ਕੇਅਰ ਸਿਸਟਮ ਲਗਭਗ ਕੋਲੈਪਸ ਹੋ ਚੁੱਕਿਆ ਹੈ ਕੋਵਿਡ ਕ੍ਰਾਈਸਿਸ ਦੇ ਨਾਲ ਨਜਿੱਠਣ ਲਈ ਅਲਬੋਟਾ ਸਰਕਾਰ ਵੱਲੋਂ ਫੈਡਰਲ ਸਰਕਾਰ ਦੀ ਮਦਦ ਵੀ ਲਈ ਜਾ ਰਹੀ ਹੈ ਬੀਤੇ ਦਿਨੀ ਕੋਵਿਡ ਕ੍ਰਾਈਸਿਸ ਸੰਬੰਧੀ ਅਲਬੋਟਾ ਵੱਲੋਂ ਮਿਲਿਟਰੀ ਰੈਡ ਕ੍ਰਾਸ ਅਤੇ ਨਿਊ ਫਾਊਂਡਲੈਂਡ ਨੂੰ ਮਦਦ ਲਈ ਸਦਿਆ ਗਿਆ ਸੀ ਅਲਬੋਟਾ ਸਰਕਾਰ ਵੱਲੋਂ ਸੂਬੇ ਦੇ ਹੈਲਥ ਕ੍ਰਾਈਸਿਸ ਨੂੰ ਵੇਖਦਿਆਂ 25000 ਪਬਲਿਕ ਸੈਕਟਰ ਵਰਕਰਸ ਲਈ ਵੈਕਸੀਨੇਸ਼ਨ ਪ੍ਰੂਫ ਲਾਜ਼ਮੀ ਵੀ ਕਰ ਦਿੱਤਾ ਗਿਆ ਹੈ ਅਤੇ ਪ੍ਰੀਮੀਅਰ ਜੈਸਨ ਕੈਨੀ ਨੇ ਕਿਹਾ ਕਿ ਜੇਕਰ 3 ਨਵੰਬਰ ਤੋਂ ਬਾਅਦ ਕਿਸੇ ਦੇ ਕੋਲ ਵੈਕਸੀਨੇਸ਼ਨ ਪ੍ਰੂਫ ਨਹੀਂ ਹੈ ਤੇ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਰੋਜ਼ਾਨਾ ਆਪਣੇ ਐਕਸਪੈਂਸ ਉਤੇ ਨੈਗੇਟਿਵ ਟੈਸਟ ਰਿਪੋਰਟ ਦਿਖਾਣੀ ਜ਼ਰੂਰੀ ਹੋਵੇਗੀ We've had ongoing collaboration with other provinces on how best to deal with the surges and hospitalizations like this and Alberta has always been there to support our fellow Canadians when they needed a helping hand. That's why we shipped cargo planes full of personal protective equipment and over 100 ventilators to Ontario, Quebec and Nova Scotia during the first wave. It's why we accepted overflow ICU patients for Manitoba in the spring and offered the same assistance to Ontario at that time, going from 78% of first dose coverage of eligible people on September the 3rd to nearly 84% by the end of today. That means that over 200,000 more Albertans now have protection from due to COVID vaccines over the past three and a half weeks. That's great news, but we have to keep the momentum going. And that is why the COVID cabinet committee today approved a requirement that all 25,000 employees of the Alberta Public Service show proof of vaccination or a negative regular test results. The majority of employees within the broader Alberta public sector including Alberta Health Services, post-secondary educational institutions and government agencies boards and commissions have already adopted similar policies. Public Service Commissioner Tim Grant will provide more details about this decision in a few minutes, but the message is clear. We value our public servants and the important work that they do. That's why we want to ensure that they are operating in safe workplaces and that we are doing everything we can to protect the millions of Albertans to whom they provide services. We have opened 23 additional ICU surge spaces in the past 7 days. Provincially our ICU capacity including the surge beds as is at 83%. Without the additional surge spaces provincial ICU capacity would be at 179%. We continue to see more patients needing critical care. For example, yesterday we had 27 patients with covid who needed to be admitted to the icu one of the highest number of daily admissions this month we want to again thank our teams who have worked to open these additional icu spaces but we need everybody's help alberta de vich as well as 64 faizi de kareeb log hi fully vaccinated han ate 72 faizi lokan nu vaccination di pehli dose lag chuki hai alberta premier jason kenny ne media nu sambodhan karde han jankari ditti ki subah par de schoolan de vich contract tracing murtu shuru kiti ja rahi hai as you know alberta's healthcare system is being tested like never before hospital is hospitalizations and icu admissions have soared in recent weeks driven largely by uh, folks who've been infected but had chosen not to get vaccinated. Yesterday in fact, eight people were admitted into intensive care units across the province with COVID-19 and all eight of them were unvaccinated. <clears throat> right now, Alberta's ICU beds are at 82% capacity with new patients admitted every day. With the R rate uh last week dipping below a level of 1 for the first time in more than a month. This is certainly encouraging news, but the situation remains very serious. Our cases are amongst uh, unvaccinated Albertans in particular. Uh we see case growth amongst uh, children from the ages of 5 to 11 years of age, especially in regions with low overall levels of vaccination. 
And that is why, acting on the recommendations of the, minister, of the Ministers of Education and Health, we are announcing new measures today to help to slow and prevent transmission at schools. We're taking action to protect students, school staff and school communities while supporting vaccinations as the best defense against COVID-19. To do this, we'll ramp up rapid testing, initiate contact notifications and increase the public reporting that families and many others rely on. Over the long term and by mid-November, AHS will take over notifying parents of contacts within school settings. School authorities will help this AHS team to identify close contacts and will focus on school-based exposures only, such as identifying classroom contacts and close contacts through participation in school sports or extracurricular activities. Starting tomorrow, October 6th, Alberta Health will publicly report the name of each school with at least two COVID cases. I want to thank Minister Copping and his department for their work to provide families with this important information. I strongly encourage every school authority to require proof of vaccination or a negative PCR or rapid COVID test for all adults who enter a school, including staff. In focus, the which Philhal Samaoge, Choti G. Breakda, Break to Badasi Galbat Karange, Alberta, to NDP MLA, Raki Pancholi, Dinal, Tijarange, Alberta, the Mojuda Health Crisis Samandi, Jat Hazirondia, Barero, Sadinal. Break the bath for the Sarin, like very fair to swagat hai in focus the episode which Alberta de Mojuta health crisis a Mandi Kalpat lay Sadana line the Hazar Han Edmonton White Mud Riding to NDP MLA Raki Pancholiji. Hello, Miss Raki. Thank you for joining PDC Punjabi. Thank you for having me, Jesse. Pleasure. Uh, talking about Alberta's uh, current health crisis, we know that Alberta is facing major health crisis and the state has declared the health of emergency as well. So what's your take on Alberta's current crisis? Well, it is, it is quite dire in Alberta right now. Uh, we are seeing uh, thousands of people. We have 1,100 people currently in hospital uh, because of COVID-19, uh, over 240 who are in ICU. Uh, we've had to uh, defer many surgeries. Uh, 8,000 surgeries uh, have been uh, put off because of our healthcare system trying to manage all the COVID cases, including 800 pediatric surgeries. We've had to call in um, the military to provide support, as well as we're very grateful for other provinces that have offered their support. It is quite a, a, a dire situation. Albertans are feeling incredibly stressed and worried right now. And our healthcare workers, our doctors and nurses, have been working so hard um, and are really being pushed to the edge, uh, trying to manage what's going on. So certainly uh, what's going on in Alberta is, uh, is quite uh, concerning to many people. And uh, I know my constituents and Albertans are, are very concerned about the long patients. And we have to be clear that so much of what's happening right now in this fourth wave in Alberta was preventable and was predictable. And it is the direct result of the fact that the Premier of Alberta made a decision, a very reckless decision, to ignore advice and evidence and to reopen Alberta completely on July 1st um, and to remove all restrictions as well as contact tracing. And that's why we're seeing the numbers that we're seeing right now. So this is a, a very concerning situation we have in Alberta. Ms. Rocky, as we know that Alberta is leading the provinces in a daily COVID-19 cases report. So what action do you think needs to be taken right now to lower down the numbers? Well, first of all, as I mentioned, we're, we're right now living with the outcome of a lot of choices that were made by the current UCP government back in July. And it's hard to undo those decisions. And one of the, the damaging parts of the decision to lift restrictions is it also sent a message uh, to many Albertans that uh, vaccination wasn't a priority. And so that's why we had such low vaccination numbers um, as the fourth wave hit. Uh, I think many Albertans got the wrong message from this government that uh, COVID was, was a thing of the past and they didn't need to worry and that's why we had such low rates. So one of the things that we had been calling for as the official opposition in Alberta was uh, bringing in a vaccine passport uh, quite well many weeks before the UCP government finally acted and we knew that that would increase vaccination rates significantly and 
the, the UCP government finally acted, although in a very confusing way and, and far too late, but we did see a big increase in vaccination numbers as a result. We are continuing to call for um, it, the reintroduction of significant contact tracing. Um, we, we, the government, UCP, just announced this week that they would finally reintroduce contact tracing in schools, but it won't take effect for another six weeks. And we know that the, that the schools uh, are where there's a lot of positive cases and uh, we're seeing many schools on outbreak situations. So we needed to have that put in place earlier. We're calling on support from the federal government um, for contact tracing and really to uh, continue to provide support to businesses and people so they could take paid sick leave when they're ill um, and not continue to go to work if they're having symptoms. These are all measures we've been calling for continuously, but specifically highlighting them for the fourth wave. And the UCP government has been very slow to act. Talking about increasing the vaccination numbers, of course, no one uh, can force anyone to get vaccinated. But if we talk about Alberta situation, uh, Premier Jason Kenney was offering $100 incentive uh, to, the, to the Albertans for getting vaccinated. Do you think it was a right approach? And do you think that government failed uh, to educate people on uh, getting vaccinated? Yeah, well, the $100 incentive that the Jason Kenny offered really made uh, almost no difference in terms of actually increasing our vaccination rate. As expected, the only thing that actually really made a big difference in increasing vaccination numbers was a, the introduction of a vaccine passport, which is why we had been calling for that for so many weeks prior to the UCP government bringing it in. And that's when we saw it increase. The $100 incentive uh, really made no difference, as we knew that it, it wouldn't. Um, and, you know, certainly going forward, we, we are concerned about the messaging that has been coming out of this government for many, uh, many months about vaccination. You know, they're highlighting it now, but for many months, the premier of this province has been talking about natural immunity and um, has not been doing a very good job of educating Albertans about how safe and proven the vaccines are, why they're important. Um, and we have a number of the government's current members, the UCP members, who are actually not in support of vaccines and say they support the right to choose. And that's creating incredibly conflicting messages. So right now, the government is very, uh, is very much uh, miscommunicating to Albertans. And that certainly had an vaccination rates. And going forward, you know, we have continued to call for um, mandatory vaccines for those people who work with vulnerable or unvaccinated populations, such as children, uh, those with disabilities, seniors. We believe in, in healthcare. We believe it's very important that there is a, a mandatory vaccination requirement for those employees who are directly working with vulnerable uh, Albertans. We need to be very clear, especially as we hope that vaccines will be approved sometime soon for children age 5 to 11. The, the government of Alberta and the UCP has done a very poor job of educating people so far, but they need to be very clear in communicating to parents how important it is that their children get vaccines when it's approved and it's, uh, and it's available in Alberta. Ms. Raki, as I mentioned before, that Alberta is experiencing major health crisis uh, these uh, these days. Do you think the Alberta's reopening was done too uh, soon and the restrictions came in too late? Yes, I think there's no doubt that it, that all of the, uh, the actions that this government has taken have been too late. We know we know that the that the current premier is a, in a political crisis of his own with his own caucus. He's struggling to keep control of his own party, and that's clearly distracted him. Um, he has been trying to uh, you know speak to his base and try to make his base happy, and those of his MLAs who keep threatening uh, to leave and to challenge his leadership, and that has been what has been distracting this premier uh, rather than leading through a public health crisis. It certainly didn't help that the Premier of Alberta went on vacation for three weeks in August as the numbers started to rise and there was nobody in his government that was uh, available to speak out and to provide some information to Albertans and to take direction. So certainly this entire distraction by, uh, by the Premier, his political future seems to be more important than making decisions based on the evidence and the public health interest of Albertans. And certainly uh, we think that that's one of the reasons why um, his distraction with politics can't be driving our public health response anymore. We believe that the uh, Chief Medical Officer of Health should be able to make independent decisions now at this point with the advice of experts on a COVID-19 science table, much as what's done in, in in Ontario, and we believe that's important to try to remove the politics uh, that is clearly distracting the current premier and his and his caucus. So, talking about the current health measures in place, do you think these measures are in enough uh, to avoid the current health crisis? 
Well, you know, we have been asking for this premier to release modeling information about what they know and what they believe is, is happening in this fourth wave. And to date, the premier continues to refuse to release that modeling engine. So we don't know right now what the current state of affairs is and whether or not we're hitting our peak in the fourth wave right now or if it's still to come. Um, we, uh, we certainly have been... At, not just the official opposition, but Albertans and public health experts have been asking for that release of that modeling information so we know what to expect. So it's hard right now. I know I'm not a public health expert. I can't tell you without that information um, what, whether or not the current measures will be effective. Uh, but we know that Albertans deserve transparency from a government that has been driven by politics rather than by evidence. So we certainly hope that the measures um, have, that have been taken so far will be effective. We're hoping Albertans go Going into a Thanksgiving long weekend, we'll follow the uh, the public health orders and limit uh, interactions where possible. Wear their masks. If you haven't gotten vaccinated, go out and get vaccinated because it's very important that we um, all come together and we want to see this this fourth wave end. We want to see our healthcare system have some pressure relieved, but uh, it's uh, we we have to wait and see what happens if we don't get the information from the government. So, how would have NDP uh, handled this situation differently? Well, certainly, as, as I mentioned, we were uh, very concerned about how quickly the, the UCP government and Jason Kenney all restrictions, one of the first provinces to do that in such a fast way in July. Uh, at that time, there was already information coming out from public health experts that there should there's reason to be cautious because of a fourth wave. So we certainly would have been more cautious and more careful in following the evidence. Um, we had been calling for uh, the fact that contact tracing should not have been removed, uh, particularly in schools. Uh, reintroducing it right now and, and knowing it won't take effect until November is far too late, so we would have kept in that contact tracing. As I mentioned, we believe that the uh, Chief Medical Officer of Health at this point should be able to make these decisions independently with the public advice of experts uh, rather than lead simply to the Premier. Um, there are a number of measures that we think supports for businesses were important to, to keep going forward, but really following the evidence and making sure that we were cautious and not being driven by politics is how we would have done this differently from the beginning and making sure that schools where children are the vast majority of unvaccinated um, Albertans right now, uh, making sure that schools and childcare um, was safe and had uh, protective measures in place to make sure to contain the spread. So those are certainly some of the actions we would have taken. All right, Ms. Rocky, thank you so much for joining PD's Punjabi and sharing your information with our viewers. Thank you very much, Desi, and I appreciate the opportunity to speak to your viewers. Thank you. Thanks. कोरोना वायरस केसेस ਨੂੰ ਘਟਾਉਣ ਲਈ ਅਤੇ ਵੈਕਸੀਨੇਸ਼ਨ ਦੇ ਆਂਕੜਿਆਂ ਨੂੰ ਵਧਾਉਣ ਲਈ ਸਰਕਾਰਾਂ ਵੱਲੋਂ ਪੂਰੀ ਕੋਸ਼ਿਸ਼ਾਂ ਕੀਤੀਆਂ ਜਾ ਰਹੀਆਂ ਹਨ ਅਸੀਂ ਵੀ ਆਪਣੇ ਦਰਸ਼ਕਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਇਹ ਅਪੀਲ ਕਰਾਂਗੇ ਕਿ ਉਹ ਹੈਲਥ ਗਾਈਡਲਾਈਨਸ ਨੂੰ ਫੋਲੋ ਕਰਦੇ ਆ ਆਪਣਾ ਪੂਰਾ ਯੋਗਦਾਨ ਪਾਉਣ ਸੋ ਇਨ ਫੋਕਸ ਵਿੱਚ ਇਹ ਸੀ ਸਾਡੀ ਅੱਜ ਦੀ ਖਾਸ ਪੇਸ਼ਕਸ਼ ਜੇ ਤੁਹਾਡਾ ਕੋਈ ਸਵਾਲ ਹੈ ਜਾਂ ਫਿਰ ਆਪਣਾ ਕੋਈ ਵਿਚਾਰ ਤੁਸੀਂ ਸਾਡੇ ਨਾਲ ਸਾਂਝਾ ਕਰਨਾ ਚਾਹੁੰਦੇ ਹੋ ਤੇ ਸਾਨੂੰ ਜ਼ਰੂਰ ਲਿਖ ਕੇ ਭੇਜੋ feedback@ptcnetwork.com ਤੇ ਮਿਲਾਂਗੇ ਅਗਲੇ ਹਫਤੇ ਉਦੋਂ ਤੱਕ ਲਈ ਮੈਨੂੰ ਦਿਓ ਇਜਾਜ਼ਤ ਤੇ ਦੇਸ਼ ਦੁਨੀਆ 